Hello everyone, this is 3DX and today I'm going to be creating another stylized model. Now if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe uh, so that you can find more stylized models. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So in this video I'm going to be creating a model based on this concept art that I have here. Um, there's a link to the uh, concept artist uh, Facebook profile in the uh, video description. So I really like this concept. Um, and I will be creating this in 3D using primarily Maya. And then after I create this in Maya, I'm going to send this to uh, ZBrush so that I can do some sculpting as well. And as you saw there at the beginning, I started out by creating a cube and then just deleting some parts of it and then using that to create to create the remaining shape and here what I did I just took a uh, snapshot of the 3d model so that I could kind of see if my proportions were right um, sometimes you can do that like if you you know, just take a screenshot real quick and I use just the snipping tool in uh, Windows and then you can just uh, use that and just draw on it um, especially if the model you're following has some like patterns that you can um, kind of trace on it so that you can uh, so that it can help you see if your proportions are looking good for the most part so I always find that uh, it's really useful especially when the model has some kind of a pattern or something that uh, can help you with proportions so I'm going to be creating this mostly in Maya uh, as always I'm using mostly just a box modeling for it and I'm trying to keep it relatively low poly this will be used uh, possibly for a game um, which is why I'm keeping it relatively low poly like things like the uh, I guess the uh, I don't want to call them bricks but just kind of like stones here at the bottom um, this can also be welded later on, uh, which is what I typically do for low poly game models is I usually make the pieces separate, but then once I'm done with all the texturing and all of that, I come back and I just weld some of the pieces just because it's usually a lot better to weld pieces for game models than just to keep them open. So here on the side, I just wanted to keep it a little bit smoother, which is why I added some more geometry. Sometimes if you have uh, triangles in areas like that, it just kind of looks a little bit uh, not too smooth. So that's usually what I, uh, where I add more geo. All right, and then I'm also opening uh, a space in the middle so that there's no wasted uh, UV space there. And then finally what I'm going to do is, um, well I'm going to make this piece that it's going to be uh, where the flames go. Although later on, I I don't think the final flames really look that good, uh, if you saw the render at the beginning. So I would probably recommend it's just maybe like a flat plane. Now obviously that's not real VFX, it's just uh, for presentation of your model. But even so, I think it would be better, it would probably look better if I have used a flat plane instead of using like a cylinder for that so that's probably what I would recommend doing is using a plane instead of a cylinder for where the flames go just to make them look a little bit better and like I said that's mainly for presentation purposes it's not real VFX or anything like that now if you know how to make VFX then I will probably go with that and so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack my UVs now one question I get all the time is why I don't uh, use some kind of texture density when I'm packing these models. Um, the main reason for that is because these aren't necessarily going um, to a game in particular where a texture density has been set, uh, which is why I just kind of like pack the UVs as, um, as, as close as I can that where they look clean and all of that. Uh, but I'm not following a specific texture density just because, uh, like I said, this is not going to a specific game uh, where a texture density has been uh, I guess identified and then I'm going to duplicate the bricks because those are going to be using the same textures 
Um, so there's going to be a lot of overlapping UVs here. And that's something I recommend if you ever need to uh, have a higher resolution on your texture. Make sure you um, reuse pieces and have overlapping UVs because that's going to save a lot of space in the UVs. And especially if you are indeed working with some kind of texture density, you want to make sure that you are you know, being smart with the UV space that you're using. And then what I'm going to do is I duplicated the low poly uh, to group and I just renamed it high poly. Now I used a tool for renaming, um, which makes it really easy. I just really like that tool because it just makes everything so easy to rename. Uh, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, by the way. Uh, obviously, you don't have to use it. You can just uh, rename things manually. So I duplicated the model and I'm just adding um, supporting edges and just bevels uh, so that when I send this to ZBrush, I can just divide it and it's going to look fine. Obviously, you can uh, add supporting edges, bevels, and all of that in ZBrush as well, so you don't necessarily have to do it in Maya. I personally just like to use Maya um, for that, so I just do it there. Now, in ZBrush, obviously, I import it as an FBX so that I keep my groups. Um, that's also a question I get sometimes is how to keep your groups and everything separate when you import to ZBrush. Uh, the trick is uh, just export as an FBX file and import it as an FBX file. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. And then what I'll do is mostly use a, um, I'm using the orb um, brush here just to add some more details and then also trim dynamic for kind of adding some edge damage as well. And then I'm using the orb uh, crack 2 for the, uh, uh, for some of the damage as well. And then I was trying uh, the, that uh, lit pattern that's in front of the uh, of the seat there, uh, but I decided to maybe just do that in Substance Painter. So some details you can add in Substance Painter, and then some you can just do in ZBrush. I I decided to go with Substance Painter because if um, I guess if I mess that up, I would just be able to easily uh, update it in Substance Painter. It would just be easier to do that than if I had done it in ZBrush and had to re-sculpt it or something like that. So there are some things that I do recommend just kind of sculpt, uh, just kind of adding in Substance Painter. But things like edge damage and all of that, I think uh, ZBrush is usually your best bet for that. Uh, anyway, after that, I was done with the high poly, so I export it and I imported all of that into Substance Painter. And I think I just baked using the uh, default settings, except I was baking by mesh name. And then I'm using the uh, 3DX stylized material. Uh, it's a smart material that I made. There is a link to the uh, tutorial for that in the video description as well. But I'm using that and I do make changes to the layers. I don't just uh, drag and drop it and be done with it. I just you know, depending on the look that you're going for, you're going to have to mess with some of the layers, maybe disable some, maybe lower the opacity in some of these layers. So that's one thing I'm going to uh, mention about that material is that uh, you will have to make some changes. It's not a drag and drop it and you're done. Uh, because, you know, every model is unique. Every model has, uh, you know, different things that are going on with it. And you have to make those changes accordingly. So then I used opacity for the flames. And like I said, I would probably recommend using just a flat plane. I didn't spend too much time uh, making the shape, so it honestly doesn't look that great. So I will probably spend more time on it. Or like I said, I personally think a flat plane would have looked, would have looked a lot better than this uh, cylinder shape. It just doesn't look that great, honestly. So that's one thing, if you're following this tutorial, that's one thing I would uh, highly recommend. Spend more time on that. Anyway, here is the final render. I used Marmosa tool back for that. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. If you're new, uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll hopefully see you in a future video. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya ZBrush. 
Substance Painter and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad, so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh, and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video, so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.